a lot of people think that lawyers are people who read and write well, and they should be. But good lawyers know how to tell stories. Successful lawyers tell stories well. A lot of my fellow law students in law school were very good storytellers. Many of them had been involved in theater at some point in their life. And one of my favorite memories of law school was every year I was in law school, we produced a play. What first captured me was escaping fully into someone else's story. Uh, it was really intriguing to me and, and all of a sudden being somewhere else and um, creating a whole other world with other people. When I graduated from law school, I actually ended up clerking for two federal judges at once in the District of Nebraska and Omaha, Judge Joseph Battalion and Judge Lori Smithcamp. And one of the first assignments that Judge Battalion gave me, he came into my office and said, Mary Catherine, I want you to uh, research all the decisions that this federal court has issued and pick the most important one. And we're gonna create a historical display on the first floor of the courthouse. And I discovered that in 1879, the first federal judge in the District of Nebraska declared Indians to be persons under the law. And that was the trial of Chief Standing Bear. And I had never heard of this case before. So I go to my judge and I said, Judge, I've picked a case, you know, Standing Bear versus Crook. And I said, this May 12th, 2009 is the 130th anniversary of the trial. We should, on the 130th anniversary, invite the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska and their chairman and their leadership to come for a ceremony in the courthouse and we should do a reenactment of the trial. And he's like, a reenactment? Like, like a play? You know, there's certain things we can do as lawyers. You know, you can argue cases, you can write law review articles, you can write really good briefs and you can cite all the cases, but what's missing in the United States right now are our stories. I am a direct descendant of John Rich and Major Rich. And actually that's one of the plays that I'm writing right now for the arena stage is about the Ridges and John Ross. Most folks at Cherokee Nation know them as the signers of the Treaty of New Echota. Some would say they deserve to be assassinated. And I understand that. I understand where those feelings come from. I would ask that people learn the entire history. There, was a, there were a lot of things that happened before 1835. So I write this play and um, I was kind of, I was very nervous writing it at first. But then I thought, you know what? This is what I do though. I gotta write this and this is who I am. So I wrote this play and we were doing a reading of it. It was so powerful to have them in the room reading um, Major Ridge and then a Ridge descendant. They both said to me afterwards, I just was taught as a kid that the Ridges were bad people and that they're the reason the Trail of Tears happened. And now I understand the full story. And I really think that, you know, I can think that the treaty was wrong, but I understand that both the Ridges and the Rosses were just doing what they thought would save their nation. And that to me was so incredibly meaningful. You know, a lot of people talk about historical trauma and the trauma um, that gets passed down from generation to generation. And I didn't really think about it, but um, Dr. Dwayne King, who's at the Gilcrease, who's done a ton of research on Cherokee Nation history, I was reaching out to him and I was, I was going through the John Ross papers at the Gilcrease and he said, you know, I actually know the very spot where Major Ridge was shot. Do you want to see it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I want to I go. And I didn't really think about it and, until I got there and, and until I, I stood on the spot. And I can't explain it, it just, um, it made it very real in a way that I had never, you know, I'd always intellectualized it. And then all of a sudden I'm trying to write their words. And, um, and I'm, I'm hearing my grandmother who's no longer with me. And um, I mean, it just, it, it was intense in a way that has never, I, I've never experienced before. And it does feel like I have to get this right. It has to be perfect. And every line has to be perfect. Otherwise I've failed them. And, um, that's a, a tough burden to carry. But I think that that's, I'm not unique in that. Anyone who's a citizen of a tribal nation is here today because at some point along the way, someone in their lineage, right, um, sacrificed his or her life so that they could be here today. And so I think no matter what you do, whether it's write plays or fight cases in the court or you know, practice traditional art or make food or raise families, whatever you're doing, right, it's, I think that we all feel, even if it's just subconscious, a little bit of that pressure of, I'm here today, I've got to do something with that.